Alrighty, you know, one day I just decided to get in my car and drive around the neighborhood. One of the things that stood out to me was virtually any street that you go on, literally within minutes, you're running across mansions and estates. And it got me to thinking about this neighborhood. You know, the rich people of Atlanta, I've done these videos before, and I get a lot of people talking about, well, there's rich people all over Atlanta. Well, this is zip code 30327. The wealthiest zip code in the Southeast aside from a few zip codes in Florida, which means it's the largest concentration of wealthy people in the area, in the state of Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia, all of that, this is the place. And it's really interesting because as I ride around and I run across these huge bodacious houses, like that's a mansion to the left. One of the things that, you know, I used to date this girl and we we're riding around and she's like, what do these people do? And that's the question. They're doctors, they're attorneys, and they're business people, and they're sales people. Because you're not gonna be some average person hanging out in this neighborhood. It just ain't gonna happen. Because the reality is that 90% of the people in America don't live like this. And because I teach financial literacy, I teach how to make money, I am well aware of the numbers and I'm well aware of how rare this is. You know, I've done these videos before and I have a lot of people who are all butthurt because, you know, I just happen to be black and I, I'm not running around some black area talking about how great it is. I don't live in that area. I live over here. This is where I live. This is where I aspire to live. And believe it or not, there's a bunch of black folks here. The old Radcliffe lives around here. Waka Flocka lives around here. Cordell Stewart lives around here. Plus countless other black folks. And here's the thing. When you live around other wealthy people, you don't get the hate that's when you are the wealthiest person in the neighborhood. When you're the wealthiest person in the neighborhood, you've got this little Mac mansion or a mansion on acres and you're it, it causes a lot of attention. Well, you know, Mr. Rafer's house over there off Stud Studell, everybody knows who you are. And you know, if you're like playing the, the game of being super charitable and giving out money and stuff and handing out turkeys at Thanksgiving, you, you get mad love. And also, on that point, when you're out and you're the man, you're the, you're the guy in your group who's going out, getting it, making money, doing what you need to do, there's this hidden expectation that you will pick up the check. And, you know, at one point it could be cool, but at another point it's gonna get old that it's always you. I've been at two dinners and stuff around here and literally these folks around here are fighting to pay the check. Everybody's like doing a kung fu move to whip out their credit card as fast as possible. There's a air of generosity with some wealthy people. Yeah, there are some wealthy people who are stingy, who don't really care about anyone else. But there's another group of wealthy people who give and give and give, and they do a lot of good things, which trickles down to their kids because one of the things I hear that all these kids around here are on drugs, all of these kids are unloved, they're raised by the nannies. Uh, to be sure, there's probably a few kids like that, but the, mo the majority of them are well-raised, they're loved, they know they're loved, and they're sheltered. Because whenever I run into these kids around here, they act like kids. They're not little mini-me's. They're not little grown-up people. They act like children. And it's awesome. 
Because I think kids should be acting like kids. But, you know, just riding around, I'm like, these houses are five to 20,000 square feet, sitting on an acre, two acres. And this is a norm. If you live in this neighborhood and you see this every day, it doesn't fascinate you or shock you. I remember I was in Florida on a tour and we went through a supposedly wealthy neighborhood and I wasn't impressed because I saw better houses in my own neighborhood. You know, it didn't really impress me. And that's how atypical it is living over here. Because once again, the, the vast majority of America doesn't live like this. The vast majority of America doesn't have houses like this. The vast of Amer the majority of America ain't banking like this. And this is one of the things I know. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this video is, you know, when I first came to Atlanta, someone took me over to West Paces Ferry and I said, I want to live over here. That was many, many years ago. And I made that dream happen through hard work and starting businesses. There are many of you who could live here. Some of you are not really that far away. Some of you make six figures and you just got to make some adjustments in two or three years, you'll be here. One of the things that I want to put on people's hearts is money matters. And if you're a parent, money really matters. Because if you move over in this neighborhood, your kids are gonna be networking with the future CEOs and Fortune 500 company type people. And it's hard to develop that relationship. Like I grew up across the street from Jack and Jack became the CEO of Coca-Cola. It's kind of hard to build that kind of relationship as an adult when you've known Jack, you call Jack up and like, hey Jack, it's John from across. Oh, what's going on? Hey man, let me put you on the calendar. You got that those type of connections and that's what happens around here. There is, uh, I remember buying some stuff from this chick on next door and it was really interesting because I go to get these little stools and she's driving the Porsche Cyan her her boyfriend's driving uh, a BMW they look to be less than 25 years old and they were living in one of the cheaper houses over off on the left side of Roswell Road if you're heading to Buckhead that's the high point area. This is where they were starting with a Porsche, a BMW, and a $500,000 to $600,000 house. Because that's where the older houses are. That's where the, because they were living in a ranch. And the ranches typically do six to 700000 And the closer you get to Buckhead, the higher those ranches go. Because some of those ranches are a million bucks. And essentially what they're gonna do is just tear it down and build a, little, a mansion on the land because the land is worth more than the house, especially if they've got two acres or more. But all of these big houses, all these people living their best version of their life. And you know, something that I see around here quite frequently is the stay at home mother. There are a bunch of them. There are a ton of them. On my street, I think there's about 65 houses. I think five or six of the women work and everyone else is a stay at home mother or a housewife. Now that's pretty common around here. And once the thing, once again, like uh, over at Egg Harbor, the, the local high school, which is the parking lot's just full of BMWs, Porsches, and Mercedes. All of the mothers met at Egg Harbor shortly before graduation of the seniors. And all I saw was bling, bling. I saw diamonds twinkling in the restaurant light. All these women looked pampered, well taken care of, living good. And they were friendly and they were like, hey, you know, because, uh, I mean, literally, they took over the restaurant. I mean, they they pretty much, I'm surprised they didn't just close the restaurant down. And I had them as a party because there was 
like many of them and they were flirting and they were talking smack and stuff and I, I just realized because I'm just sitting there and once again for the black folks there were a lot of black mothers in the mix and you know it, it's just cool to see that because these mothers were getting ready to launch their children into the world and that's a wonderful thing when you can grow up in that type of situation when you can have a mom a dad and dad is paid where you have a good life because well, like i said going back to these kids are sheltered <laughs> they are they they just don't know the harsh ills of the world just yet and they will be adults when they have to deal with some of this stuff or hear about this stuff which i think is pretty good because one of the things that money brings you is options and options bring choices and like you know here's something that's a little funny i think i am the only well me and the other guy i think he's a widower he appears to be 70 but i think i'm the only active dating bachelor in my neighborhood and there is this email neighborhood email list and there were some folks who was just like well such as such has some pretty girls hanging all over his place right this was on the email list i was like whoa and it, it hit me most of these people are married they're not dating they're not hanging out you know it's like his date night with the wife or you know with the hubs and you know it, it really wasn't that much activity in my mind but to someone who's been married 20 30 years and all their friends are married that stands out because uh there was one chick who was um she was quite tasty and uh she had a little dress on and some high heels when she came in and they commented on that and i was just like wow this this is one of the things because as big as this neighborhood is it's very tight knit people know each other people are in each other's business people look out for each other and it, it's, it's just crazy that i was the topic of the neighborhood conversation because i was dating but that just shows you that you know once again you know a lot of people talking about uh marriage rates going down marriage rate ain't going down here these folks over here are getting married left and right and having kids three to five kids I see that frequently three to five kids because having a bunch of kids you need some money because kids are expensive so if you could have three or four kids all of them in private school you're rolling and that's something I see because I was in Waffle House and that's close to one of the private schools and there was a family in there and all four of their kids had on the private school gear and they you know it was just like so it's a family of six and this is something I consistently see so you know this whole notion that nobody's getting married you know poor people broke people yeah they may not be getting married they may be shacking to save on those bills but fellas you want to be a provider you want to be the man you want to be running stuff because this is how you know I see a lot of tradition in this neighborhood I see a lot like Thanksgiving I saw a lot of tradition and you see a lot of traditional marriages husband works wife stays at home wife manages the house and that's just how it goes down and this is you know because one of the things I'm thinking about doing is this neighborhood is lit up and I'm thinking about probably in a few days going around one night and doing the rich folks of Atlanta Christmas once again I know there are rich people all over Atlanta. I know, but there is not a greater concentration than this neighborhood. That's like saying, okay, there's four pretty chicks over in Covington, but there's, you know, 10,000 of them over here. Where you wanna go fishing? You wanna go in Covington or you wanna come over here? I'm just saying, cause you know, every time I do one of these videos, I get, the hoteps coming after me because once again 
I wanted to live over here since I moved to Atlanta, and it's something I made happen, and I, I consider it an accomplishment because it took a lot of effort, hard work, and planning, and execution. And here's another thing that may shock you. A lot of these houses are paid for because uh, I'm looking to get into rental real estate, and I just started here, and I started looking in a lot, you know, just drive up, look at the house, get the number, and go to the records, and you will see that a lot of these houses are in LLCs, which means that they're paid for or they're in trust because, you know, you get like a $2 million house. That's going to be nine to $11,000 per month for uh, 30 years. And these folks know how to do math because if you're making good money and you're well-educated and you know what to do with it, you, it ain't, it ain't going to make you, it ain't going to take you long to figure out like, I need to pay this house off as quick as possible because I'm going to save hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions in interest. Listen to the Dave Ramsey show. They talk about this all the time. The average millionaire that they interview has paid their house off in eight to 10 years. Cars paid off. You know, these folks around here, don't they don't do traditional financing. They don't do car loans. Well, most of them don't like there are a few apartments that are close by and you know these folks want to have proximity to this level of wealth and the, the network because the networking over here is off the chain um you could be living in a neighbor you know next door neighbor could be the vp or the president of an owner of a company that's just not some regular type of networking that is supreme networking because you know you can get a job or you might be able to close a business deal. When I used to work in business environments, our best salesmen, which were funny, lived in these neighborhoods where they would just talk to their neighbors and sell them office furniture. That's how they did it. They would talk to their neighbors and like, oh, well, John here owns this corporation or Bill owns this corporation. And that's all they did. They just networked in their neighborhood and they sold office furniture. Well, I was on the phone cold calling cold calling i mean i i was doing it much harder and you know fortunately for me that i was good at cold calling but i just saw like one company i worked for the guy who owned the company you know he 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 just was at home most of the time you know he he did the same thing he lived in this house with seven bathrooms and he just talked to his neighbors and that's how he got deals you live in a house with seven bathrooms that's a million dollar house. There, there's a, and that million dollar house was situated with other million dollar houses. So, you know, it's very interesting what goes down here and how quiet it is and nothing ever happens. And the police don't mess with you. I mean, you know, they're around, but they're just kind of patrolling. They're not like, because one of the reasons I don't think they mess with people is you could easily pull over the wrong person. You could pull over somebody that has a financial wherewithal to make your life hard as a cop. Because, I mean, I hear that they pull people further down Roswell Road over all the time where all the apartments are. But I just don't see it. It just doesn't happen. And this is just another one of the perks of living here because they're used to seeing people with money. So they just don't harass people. They don't pull people over. Like if you a guy with money living in the hood and you're gonna be consistently harassed because you're so atypical than everyone else. So this is wrapping this up, heading back home. Like I said, I think I'm gonna do the rich people of Atlanta Christmas for you guys. That should be dope. Cause some of these houses are, I mean, they, they lit up. They're, they're really lit up, so I'm going to probably drive around one night and get that done. All right. We're about to pull up in the driveway. For those of you who are curious, the houses in this neighborhood are from 800000 to $1.5 million. That's where they be. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video. And be sure to subscribe for your financial education.